Welcome to Liturgy the Word on July 13th, 2023. It is Thursday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. So I'm so glad you're all here with us today. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to hear the word of the Lord by bringing to mind some of the times where perhaps we've fallen short in following the Lord sometimes when uh, we prefer to have control instead of trusting that the Lord, that his will is what's right for us. Um, some of the times when we maybe should have acted and we didn't, or we acted inappropriately and we shouldn't have, and maybe we hurt someone. Let's think of all those things, um, the times that we've sinned in our thoughts and in our words. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Lord have mercy on us and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Judah approached Joseph and said, I beg you, my Lord, let your servant speak earnestly to my Lord, and do not become angry with your servant, for you are the equal of Pharaoh. My Lord asked your servants, have you a father or another brother? 
So we said to my Lord, We have an aged father and a younger brother, the child of his old age. This one's full brother is dead, and since he is the only one by that mother who has left, his father dotes on him. Then you told your servants, Bring him down to me that my eyes may look on him. Unless your youngest brother comes back with you, you shall not come into my presence again. When we returned to your ser servant, our father, we reported to him the words of my Lord. Later, our father told us to come back and buy some food for the family. So we reminded him, we cannot go down there. Only if our youngest brother is with us can we go. For we may not see the man if our youngest brother is not with us. Then your servant, our father, said to us, as you know, my wife bore me two sons. One of them, however, disappeared, and I had to conclude that he must have been torn to pieces by wild beasts. I have not seen him since. If you now take this one away from me too, and some disaster befalls him, you will send my white head down to the netherworld in grief. Joseph could no longer control himself in the presence of all his attendants, so he cried out, Have everyone withdraw from me. Thus, no one else was about when he made himself known to his brothers. But his sobs were so loud that the Egyptians heard him, and so the news reached Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still in good health? But his brothers could not give him no answer. So dumbfounded were they at him. Come closer to me, he told his brothers. And when they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you once sold into Egypt. But now do not be distressed and do not reproach yourselves for having sold me here. It was really for the sake of saving lives that God set me here ahead of you. The word of the Lord. The Lord remembers his down a famine on the land and ruined the crop that sustained them. He sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. Till his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord proved him true.
May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper in your belts, no sack for the journey, or a second tunic, or sandals, or a walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it, and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. Whoever will not receive you or listen to your words, go outside that house or town and shake the dust from your feet. Amen, I say to you. It will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I guess I would have to say generally, I believe that I'm a pretty trusting person. I trust God and want to abide in his will. This requires a certain amount of letting go of control. That is difficult for me, generally, but lately I've found it to be even more difficult. As a mom of three young adults, what my mother had said to me years ago finally makes much more sense. She used to say, when your kids are little, they have little problems. When your kids are big, their problems are big. In the past few weeks, our oldest son has been traveling from Philly to DC for a summer internship, and our youngest is going out to sea on a cargo ship as part of his training at the US Merchant Marine Academy. With these things happening, I'm finding myself lately full of anxiety. Why? I feel as though I want to be back in the driver's seat, like I don't trust God to take care of them. But he's gotten us through this far. Somehow, recently, for some reason, I'm not sure why, I want my hands on the steering wheel. I haven't been abiding in his will. I want control. So where's my trust? So why do I tell you this? Well, I think this is exactly what today's gospel is all about. It's about trusting God. Yesterday, I mentioned that the apostles must have been terrified to go out on their own and do all the things that up to this point, they had only watched Jesus do. But not only do they have to go and do all these things, they have to go with nothing. No money, no extra clothes, no protection, and not even shoes. Jesus wanted them to go with only one thing complete confidence that God would take care of their needs. They had to relinquish control and trust God. They had to trust that they would find a place to stay. They had no money for food or lodging, no stick to protect them from wild animals on the journey, no shoes for comfort, but they only needed to trust that God would take care of them. It is very easy for us in 2023 to not have to rely on God at all for anything. We have enough money to get us out of a jam. We have a secure home to keep us safe. We have enough to eat and we don't go anywhere that we deem to be unsafe. We foolishly think that we are in control. So how do we strengthen our trust muscles? We must let go of trying to control everything. This is such an important lesson for me. Why do I spend even one moment worrying about the safety of my sons? I think it's because somehow I believe that I can control their situations, but I cannot. Instead of using their circumstances to strengthen my trust in God, I went into worry mode. What a wasted opportunity to grow in the Lord. Corey Ten Boom spoke so eloquently about worry. Worry doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrow. 
It empties today of its strength, she said. So today, after hours of worry, my two sons are safe and are on their way to exciting adventures. So what good did all of my anxiety do? It proved to me that I did not trust God as I should. I remember when our oldest son, Eben, was born and we brought him home from the hospital for the first time. I remember when I took him up to his crib, I laid him down and watched him fall asleep. After a few minutes of standing there, I said to myself, I certainly can't stand here all day and watch him sleep. So I asked God to watch over him when I couldn't be there with him. And I've done that. I've truly trusted that God would be with him for almost 25 years now. So I asked God to watch over him when I couldn't be there. I need to remember that prayer today. It is a prayer of surrender of my control to God's will. And I need to trust that God's will, not mine, be done. When I let go of my control, only then am I free to trust in God's will for my life and the lives of my children. I am to take no money, no sack, no clothes, no walking stick, and no sandals. I am to rely only on the Lord. God is trustworthy. He loves us, and only when we trust him in all things and let go of our need to be in control, only then can we be free. When we are free, we will receive the peace that God offers to the towns and villages that Matthew writes about in today's gospel, a peace that will come and rest upon us. So I have one important question for you today. Can you let go of some control today and trust God? And if not, why not? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you call us to let go of control and trust that you will provide for our every need. Help to empty us of the anxieties of this world and to know that you make the sun rise and set. You have counted every hair on our head and you give the smallest of sparrows shelter from the storm. None of our concerns are too big or too small for you. You keep all of creation in your capable and loving hands. Give us the strength to trust in you always, to relinquish the driver's seat and the steering wheel of our life to you and to trust that you will take us wherever you want us to go. And we ask this in the name of your most precious son. Amen. So thank you everyone for being with us today. I truly do love being here with you at Liturgy of the Word. And I can't wait to be with you again. Have a great day.